Hi, I'm Lionel Clark with Destiny's Point Church. Thank you very much for joining us today and checking us out. For more information, check us out on destinypoint.com. Or join us in person on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. If you have your Bible today, I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter number 19. Luke 19. And as you are finding it there in your Bible or maybe on your smartphone, uh, as you find it there, I want you to stand on your feet today, if you're able, for the reading of God's holy word. Are you ready for the word of the Lord this morning? Man, about four of you are. I'm going to check on this side over here. Are you ready for the word of the Lord this morning? Amen. The atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Amen. Listen, I prepared my heart and I have to come in here with an anointed word, but we've got to come in with an anointed ear to hear the word. Amen. And I know I can feel faith and I can feel it in this house today that God's going to speak to us and he's going to touch our hearts and minister to us. Luke chapter number 19. I want to preach a message to you today called this coming up short coming up short Luke chapter number 19 verse number one and Jesus entered and he passed through Jericho everybody say Jericho and behold there was a man named Zacchaeus which was chief among the publicans and he was a rich man he sought to see Jesus who he was but he could not for the press or the crowd because he was little of stature he could not get to Jesus because he was coming up short amen he ran before and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus for he was to pass that way everybody say that way and when Jesus came to the place man there's some awesome words in this passage when Jesus came to the place he looked up and he saw and he said unto him Zacchaeus make haste and come down for today I must abide at your house and he made haste and he came down and he received him joyfully and when they saw it they all murmur saying this that Jesus has gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner how many knows there's always going to be a hater somewhere amen Zacchaeus stood and he said to the Lord he said behold Lord the half of my goods I give now to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation I will restore to him fourfold Jesus said unto him this day is salvation come to this house for as much as also he is the son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost I love the story of Zacchaeus how many remember back in junior church that's what we used to call it Sunday school junior church how many remember the Zacchaeus song Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he he climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see and as the Lord passed by I can't remember the rest of the words <laughs> the Lord looked up and said I'm going to your house today with something like that amen <laughs> Zacchaeus, what a powerful story. Coming up short, I want to talk to you today about finding real fulfillment only in Jesus Christ. I want to tell someone today that God's about to break the curse. He's about to break the reality. He's about to break the feeling over somebody who keeps coming up short in life. Jesus is about to make up the difference. Amen. When you feel like you're coming up short, he will make up the difference. Difference. I come to preach that to someone this morning. Are you ready? Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and our lives. We ask you to bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Touch about three, four people around you and say, coming up short no more. <laughs> yeah. 
my heart is stirred this morning. I feel this for somebody in this house today. I want to ask you this morning, and I know every one of us would absolutely agree and think of a time or many times, maybe even something that happened yesterday. But I want to ask you today, have you ever came up short in a situation or a circumstance? Have you ever came up a little shy of the goal or the thing that you are running after? Have you ever been at the uh, store and you're at the register? And really this probably happened uh, many years ago because now we're used to carrying our debit cards and things like that. But when we used to carry cash and almost cash only to pay for things, have you ever been at the register and come up a a little bit short and uh, how many is thankful for those times that all you had was a $20 bill and you went to the store and they rung up all your stuff and they said that'll be $19.99 how many is thankful that God made a way amen <laughs> Have you ever been there, though, where you come up a little short? Have you ever been at the register and you start checking your pockets? You know that there's nothing in your pockets, but we start doing one of these. And, 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 and you're, while you're doing that, you're just trying to throw the, the cashier off so you can begin to think of what am I going to do? I thought I had a little bit of change in my pockets. Have you ever ran out to your car and told them, just hold on a second? And I've been there. I've been to Taco Bell or McDonald's and needed a quarter or so and said, give me just one second. I know I got something out there. Aren't you thankful have you, if you've ever come up short that someone was in line and saw you in need and, and threw a little bit on there to make up the difference to help you? Aren't you thankful for some of those people that's out there? You know, have you ever parked downtown and prayed that God would blind the parking meter patrol? that they wouldn't give you a ticket? Have you ever said, Lord, I hide in the shadow of the Almighty and I've got to run in this, this building and I don't have any change? Lord, hide my car from the patrol so they don't give me a ticket. Come on, somebody. I pleaded the blood of Jesus over my car. I've laid hands on my car and said, Lord, I got to go in here and take care of this utility bill. So please, Lord, I don't have any change. Just hide my car from the enemy. <laughs> have you ever come up short in life amen or a situation maybe your team has come up short listen I know what I'm talking about today uh, being from Indianapolis my team has always come up short in the playoffs and in the championship I have lived by almost I've come to a place where if my team just makes it to the championship I go ahead and celebrate because I already know what's going to happen I just go ahead and celebrate that we just made it <laughs> we've been there amen where we've come up a little short and and almost got there have you ever put your heart into something your energy your time your spirit <laughs> your mind into something only for it to come up a little bit short and not get there. Maybe your marriage today, maybe things aren't gelling the way that you intended for. Maybe you've been in a rough season. Maybe it's been a rocky season and there's struggle and, and it seems like you, you and your spouse, you, you just can't get on the same page and, and things are just coming up short in your marriage than from what you intended. Maybe maybe it's your job. May, maybe your finances. You, you've been applying. You've been working hard. You You've been going back to school to better yourself and to, 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 to gain greater opportunities. And you've been trying, you've been giving, but it just seems like things are coming up short. Maybe raising your children, maybe your child, it seems like the more that you try to spend time with them or the more you try to, to, to position.
in them in the things of God. It just seems like the more rebellious that they become and the more disconnected that you feel from them. Maybe it's your dream. Maybe the dream that God has given you. Maybe as, as time passes and more time passes, maybe you're in a place where it just seems like the dream just gets further and further away. Am I talking to anybody today? Maybe you feel like there's times you take one step forward and then life comes and the enemy comes and pushes you two steps back. Maybe in your faith, maybe in your relationship with God, maybe in this faith journey, it seems like you just can't break through. Or maybe you're here today and you feel like you just can't break that addiction. Oh, you've tried over and over, but it just keeps a hold of you. You can't do it. Maybe you're like Paul and you say the things that I, I should be doing, I don't do. And the things that I shouldn't be doing, I find myself often doing. Maybe there's been a war and a struggle. You feel like you're on fire for God for a week or so. And then life happens and the enemy comes by and you begin to slip back and your heart gets cold. Or, or maybe you, 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 you want to serve God, but the life is just too busy. And there's things that's happening around you that hinder you or you allow it to hinder you. And you just feel like you're coming up short in your family, in your finances, in your faith, things all around you. Listen, I want to tell you the results of feeling like you continue to come up short feel are things like this. You, you feel empty and you feel sad and, and you feel frustrated and you get confused and, and maybe even the world starts to enter in and you, you start looking back at your old life and the things of this world and if you're not careful, coming up short can result into a mindset of why even try another day? Why even go to church another time? Why even give God another praise? And it feels like uh, those things happen. Then you begin to disappear for a while. Am I preaching to anybody that's ever come up a little short in life and your faith and your finances and those things? There have been great people in the Bible that have come up short. Amen? You're quiet today. There have been great people that have come up short in their ways and in their, their journey. I think about Samson in the Bible. He was called to be a deliverer, but he kept his eyes on the wrong woman, the wrong person, and continued to go down that route, and he ended up coming up short in some situations. I think about the man at the pool of Bethesda. He was so close to his miracle. He was a, a man that was lame who stood by the pool where an angel would come and stir the waters at a certain time of the year, and the first one that would get in would be made whole of whatever disease that they had. Jesus came by and said, do you want to be made whole? And he said, I don't have anybody when the water is stirred to put me into the pool. I always come up short. I think about the woman with the issue of blood. She was trying everything to, to find her healing and to find ways that she spent all that she had. She was coming up short. And I think about the lame man who, the, another that was standing in, in Acts chapter 3 or he was sitting at the gate beautiful of the temple of God. He was so close to the church but he was still close to the world. He was hanging around a dead church because nobody had the power to raise him up and he was coming up short. I think about Demas in the New Testament who was a disciple of Paul and working with Paul but eventually turned away from the faith and Paul said Demas has forsaken me, has forsaken me, loving this present world. I think about Judas. What an opportunity to walk with Jesus and to serve Jesus. But he got his eyes on money and success. And you know what happened? It caused him to come up a little bit short. Is there anybody here today that's been there? Or maybe you're here this morning. I'm talking to somebody. Your life, your marriage, raising your kids, your business, your faith, your, your, your health, your spirit. You feel like you're a little bit short. You keep 
coming up short. Listen, I know what it's like because I've been there. I know what it's like when Jesus is coming by and everybody like Zacchaeus is seeing Jesus and touching Jesus and it seems like I just can't get to him. I know what it's like to be in those seasons but I want to tell someone today, don't you stop, don't you quit. You keep moving, you keep pressing because you're going to meet him in that place. Are you hearing me today? Because eventually he had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus is the difference maker when you come up short. Amen. <laughs> Aren't you thankful for those who throw a little money on it to help make up the difference? Amen. Aren't you thankful that when you come up a little short that, that people have thrown in and, and helped out? I want to tell you today that Jesus is the difference maker and he will throw in and help you make up the difference. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the difference maker. Everybody say difference maker. He's the difference maker. When you're coming up short, he can make a way. Moses stood before a Red Sea with all the children of Israel around him and behind him. God said to bring his people out. And here he is before the Red Sea and the enemy chasing them down. He's thinking, how are we going to get across this Red Sea? What are we going to do? God, you told me to come to this place. And now the Red Sea is before us. And I don't know what to do. What did, Jesus, what did God say? He said, what do you have in your hand? He said, all I have is this rod. All I have is this staff. He said, stretch that staff. He stretched the staff. And we know the story. The Red Sea parted and God made a way. Listen, I want to tell you, David stood before a giant and didn't know what to do. I know, I know he knew what to do, but he wondered, is he going to be able to bring him down? God said, pick up a rock and bring down the giant. A widow was about to make one more meal with a little bit of oil that she had because they were in a famine. And she said, I'm going to make one more meal for me and my son, and then we're going to die. But God said, said to the prophet said give me a little part of it and watch what happens and you know what her oil never ran out and she got through the famine there was thousands of people on the side of the hill that had been listening to Jesus teach all day long and they were hungry and they didn't know what to do Jesus they found they came to him and said all we found was this little boy he asked two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread but there are thousands of people how we going to do it? Jesus said, just go ahead and give it to me. I want to tell you if you ever come up short and you feel like you don't have enough, if you're ever against the Red Sea and all you have is a stick, if you're ever in a situation and all you have is two fish and five loaves of bread, if you're ever in a famine and you just have a little bit of oil and you feel like you're going to come up short, all you got to do is just give it to Jesus and watch him make up the difference in your life. Can I hear a good amen out there today? Amen. Don't you give up. Don't you get discouraged. Don't you allow the crowd to stop you. You keep moving. Zacchaeus saw Jesus coming and he couldn't see him and he couldn't get to him. And he just kept moving because the crowd and Zacchaeus kept moving. He kept pressing and eventually he climbed up into the tree, didn't he? To see Jesus. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Even in a season of feeling like you're coming up short. Because you're going to meet him in that place. He's going to meet you in that place and make up the difference. And all you have to do is just give him what you have. Amen. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, you need to give the Lord what you have. Tell him. <laughs> Listen, I want to share some things with you today. This, I feel this in my heart. When we are coming up short or we're struggling, we made a mistake or we sinned or things aren't flowing the way that we want them to flow. Oftentimes, we go into hiding. 
Go ahead and elbow your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. <laughs> we often go into hiding, don't we? When we start doing stuff ourselves and trying to make it happen and tell Jesus, I'm taking the will back. <laughs> We end up oftentimes going into hiding. We'll make a bigger mess around the corner. Adam and Eve, they knew. God said, you can eat of any tree in this garden, any of them. But don't eat of this tree. There's always a first part that belongs to God. He said, don't touch it. He told the Israelites when they conquered, they moved into the promised land and Jericho was the first city. He said, when you conquer this city, don't touch one thing in this city. The first always belongs to him. Adam and Eve, they knew and they partook. And what did they do? They went and they hid themselves, didn't they? They took fig leaves and covered their nakedness and they hid themselves. And what happened? Every day, God in the cool of the day would come down and spend time with them. He came down this particular day and couldn't find them. And he said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? He found them. And Adam said, we were naked and we hid ourselves. Because when we come up short or we do it our way or we fall short of the plan of God, oftentimes we go into hiding and we run from God. When I was in sixth grade, <laughs> I remember back in the day, Every six weeks, we got a report card. And in those days, they were so much more simple. You either got an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F. I look at my kids' report cards today, and I'm like, I don't even know what this is talking about. <laughs> Elementary, it's like check marks and satisfied. Well, I'm like, well, it was A, B, C, D, and F back in the day. I was a pretty good student. Not really. No. <laughs> My, I daydreamed about basketball all day. I was like, oh, what's the teacher talking about? <laughs> I remember in sixth grade, the first six week period, I got my report card and for the first time in my life, there was a D on it. And I, my heart, I was, Lord Jesus, help me. I remember I put that report card, I hid it in my bedroom couple weeks went by and you know when you're not doing right and you're hiding you know that you're scared you're just like things aren't you're scared that that your parents are gonna remember so you're you're sweating at the dinner table hoping they don't remember and I remember this particular time I got a D on my report card my first grading period in sixth grade first time ever I was scared I was upset I knew my parents were gonna be upset I knew my dad was gonna kill me I hid my report card and about two or three weeks went by and I remember my dad said hey have you gotten a report card and I'm telling you, the fear of God came all over me. And I said, oh, oh yeah, actually I did. <laughs> and praying in the Holy Ghost all the, way down, all the way down the hallway, I found my report card. And I remember I went into the bathroom <laughs> and I stood there and I began to cry. I cried. And I remember my dad knocking on the door. He said, what are you doing in there? I hear you crying. And I opened up the door and I showed him my report card. And I remember he was like, all right, all right. 
and we talked about it and I was upset and we got through it. Listen, I went for two or three weeks in agony, struggling because I didn't do right. And then I made another mistake. I came up short and then I hid the thing. Am I preaching to anybody today? And then I made it worse. And I, I caused more havoc in my own emotions and my own mind and, and made the thing even worse because I hid the thing. And all I should have done was just come and become, I come clean to my parents and said this and, and, and suffered the consequences and got better and all those things. Listen, I come to tell you today that I'm preaching to somebody that's been coming up short and it's because of your own decisions and you got yourself in a mess and, and you continue to go down that way and you've been hiding from God and you've been distant from God. I come to tell you, listen, you don't have to run from God when you come up short. Don't run from him. Just run to him. He loves you. His arms are open to you. He won't condemn you. He will help you. You will make it worse if you hide from him. Amen. I think I hurt my parents heart more by not being able to to trust them to share with them my victory and my defeat and we often run from God when really he wants us to run to him amen, amen. Zacchaeus I mean I gotta hurry Zacchaeus is a tax collector he in those days he he is the chief among the publicans he is a corrupt man he is a stingy man he has a he's a man with no heart no compassion he had wrong people he had uh, he had uh, worked um, his business to 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 wrong people we know that he even said if I've taken anyone from the Lord Lord if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation I'll restore to them we know that he didn't do right and he was wrong he was a corrupt stingy hard man listen no doubt you got to understand that this man had a void in his heart he was so empty and I found out that oftentimes broken people will break others or hurting people will hurt others so Zacchaeus he is a broken man and he is hurting others he is he has taken advantage of others and he is coming up short and why is he coming up short number one because he is born this way amen he's born into already a lifestyle of coming up short his stature even the Bible says he was a man uh, that was short in stature his height was even a symbol of what was going on in his own heart and how he was listen he was born this way he was coming up short because he was born into it I come to tell someone today this is very elementary but I feel like it's going to help someone today we are all born coming up short of the glory of God amen we were born into it because the first Adam everybody say the first Adam because Adam and Eve the first Adam the Bible says in the New Testament because of their disobedience what happened sin entered into the world because Adam's sin disobedience and the curse and struggle and sickness and all these things entered into it so every one of us when we're born into this world we are already born coming short of the glory of God because of one man's sin and disobedience a lot of people blame Adam but then we fall short ourselves. amen so because of one man's sin we are born this way so the first Adam you got to understand that the Bible refers to Adam in the Old Testament as the first Adam and because of the first Adam there was sin and curse and sickness and death was brought but I've got good news for you today that there's also a second Adam his name was Jesus Jesus is referred to as the second Adam he brought life the first Adam brought sin sickness separation and brokenness and struggle but the second Adam brought healing hope life joy and purpose what the first Adam messed up the
the second Adam came to fix and you don't have to come up short another day what you got to do you've got to get delivered from the first Adam and you've got to get into the second Adam amen how many struggle and fight with the first Adam within you all of us come on everyone lift your hand say that's me <laughs> The process of sanctification and living this journey is being delivered from the first Adam, amen, if you will. And now we identify with the second Adam. We were born this way. Zacchaeus was born this way. He was coming up short. Number two, why is he coming up short? Because Zac is hanging around the wrong crowd. Yeah, man, this is very simple today. Is this all right? You're quiet. I know I wasn't here last Sunday. I'll call Pastor Donnie. He can come back. <laughs> the second reason is because we're just going to call him Zach. Zach's hanging around the wrong crowd. Everybody say the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd. I believe it's on the PowerPoint. You see that? Zach is hanging around the wrong crowd. He's coming up short because he's born into it. He's hanging around the wrong crowd. And watch this. The wrong crowd produces the wrong influence. The wrong influence produces the wrong thinking. The wrong thinking produces the wrong lifestyle. Amen? I come to tell you that you have to come out from amongst the crowd if you are coming up short and you're not getting what God wants you to get and you know that you're coming up short you got to check yourself and you got to check the people that you're running with that's influencing your mind and your lifestyle amen if you run with dogs you're going to get fleas. Amen. <laughs> show me your closest friends and I will show you your future. Come on, somebody. Man, this, this is good stuff right here. Amen. You, I'm not saying that we're not friends or friendly to everyone, but there has to come a point in our life when we make up our mind that we're going to serve Jesus and we're going to run after the plan of God that he has for us. I'm telling you, there will come a point where God will begin to deal with you to make sure that the crowd that you used to run with isn't influencing your heart anymore. You now need to be the influencer of Jesus upon the them because the wrong crowd produces the wrong influence that produces the wrong thinking that produces the wrong lifestyle look at somebody and say there's some people I need to say goodbye to go ahead and tell them the man at the pool of Bethesda you heard me preach it Jesus said do you want to be made whole no doubt this man's been laying there for 30 some years absolutely but Jesus really had to ask him, do you really want this? Do you really want to be made whole? Because watch this, if you do, no more living here, no more hanging around these people, and no more holding on to your past. If you really want this, I will touch you, but you're going to have to come up out of some stuff. Amen? Come on, somebody. Am I preaching to anybody? If you really want to be healed and whole and live the life that Jesus has ordained for your life, there's some stuff and some people you got to walk away from. Amen? Number three, I got to tell you this. Number one, he's born this way. Number two, he's hanging around the wrong crowd. Number three, he is living in the cursed place. It goes along with number two here. Zach is living amongst the cursed place, kind of like hanging around the wrong crowd. He couldn't see Jesus because the crowd was around him. He had to separate himself from the crowd to get to Jesus. Then he was living in a cursed place. You got to understand, Jesus in the story enters in, and he's passing through Jericho. In Joshua 6 and 26, when they conquered Jericho, Joshua made a declaration. He said, Cursed be the one who would ever rebuild this city ever again do you know that was in there and here years and generations later Jericho is thriving again 
But Jesus enters into Jericho. Just side note, aren't you thankful for a God that'll enter into the cursed place to break the curse off of you? That Jesus isn't afraid of the cursed place. He's not afraid of your sin. He's not afraid of your struggle. He's not afraid. Listen, he will enter into the cursed place and break the curse. Do you know that Jesus even became the curse? He took the curse upon himself upon the cross. I'm thankful that there were times when I was living in a cursed place and I couldn't find my way out and I turned around and there was Jesus in the cursed place taking me by the hand and walking me out of that mess. Is there anybody that can give the Lord a shout of praise today? <laughs> Zach is living in the cursed place and he's wondering why he's coming up short. He's wondering why things aren't happening for him, why things just can't get over the hump, why there's just no joy, why he's sleeping at night, laying his head on his pillow, and there's emptiness in there. I'm working hard. I'm trying. I, I'm trying to be a good husband and a good father. I'm working overtime. I'm taking care of this and taking care of that. And why do I feel so empty? And why am I so, I feel so disconnected? And why are things coming up short? Maybe you're living in a cursed place. Maybe there's a cursed thing that you are partaking of that's causing you to come up short. I'm going to hide behind this right here. <laughs> you guys are looking for a real shouting message today. How many cursed things are we involved in? And we wonder why we can't get a breakthrough. Now, you're going to have to buckle in somebody. This is some holiness preaching right here. We're preaching to everyone. I'm preaching to myself right here. Listen, how many cursed things are we involved in? How many things that make us smile or chuckle that would make the Holy Ghost blush? We'd never fornicate or cheat on our spouse, but we'll watch a movie and get entertained by people doing it. Come on, somebody. We never allow our kids to murder or go to a club and, 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 and bump and grind, but oh yeah, we'll buy them the CD and let them listen to garbage and junk. We'll buy them video games where they're driving around murdering people. Oh, we never allow our kid to murder or bump and grind, but we'll buy them the CD and we'll buy them the game to do so. Oh, I'd never rob my mother or my father, but we rob God every week when we don't bring the tithe and the offering unto him. Listen, I'm here to tell you, maybe you're coming up short because maybe you're partaking in a curse thing and until you break the curse thing you will always come up short for those of you who didn't know I'm trying to give myself a little background music Dun. oh did you unmute it there we go that sounded terrible <laughs> Steve told me he's taking some organ lessons. He's going to back me up on the organ. <laughs> Don't you lie. <laughs> go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, what are you holding on to that you need to let go of? Ooh. I wonder why we come up short. Maybe God's saying, until you let this go, until you give this to me, until you, you repent of this, until you make this right, you're going to come up short every time. Maybe, watch this, this is in the Bible, this is a tough one right here. God said, do not bring me an offering. If you got something going on with somebody else, do not bring me an offering until you make it right with them. And then when you make it right with them, then I'll receive your offering. Listen, sometimes we give God our offering offerings and we know that we got some issue with somebody and we just ignore it and hoping that God will bless us. Maybe God's not going to bless you. You keep coming up short. You wonder why. God's like, I don't care. You can give me a million dollars. It doesn't matter to me. You got to go make it right with your brother or sister in Christ. Then I'll receive you. But if you don't, you can give all you want to, but you will keep coming up short every time. Man, that's some Holy Ghost preaching right there. I'm going to run this whole church off. <laughs> so, I got to hurry. Look at Zach's response to coming up short. Jess, if you wouldn't mind, you can come to the music here. 
he has a choice to make. Am I going to stay right here? Keep coming up short, or am I going to do something about it? Man, I wish I had some more time. I'd do if I wanted it, but listen up. <laughs> Number one, Zach positions himself to meet Jesus, doesn't he? He positions himself. He, he runs ahead and he climbs up into a tree. He, he positions himself so that he can encounter Jesus. Listen, if you draw close to God, the Bible says he will draw close to you. Amen? He positions himself to meet Jesus. Listen, I, I got to tell you this. Listen, there, there in Luke chapter number 18, the Bible says a different story that Jesus is entering into Jesus. Jericho and as he's entering into Jericho there's a blind man sitting on the side of the road and as he's entering in no doubt the crowd is oh Jesus is here Jesus the healer the more the miracle worker this blind man who is keen to sound uh, uh, hears that Jesus is in the area so he begins to cry out and begins to say oh son of David have mercy upon me we know the story in Luke chapter number 18 Jesus heals him doesn't he he heals Heals the blind man. It doesn't give him a specific name in Luke 18. It says that there was a blind man as he entered into Jericho. Watch this. In Mark chapter number 10, there's another story. Some preachers and people think it's the same person, but scholars believe that it's too different because the Bible says in blind Bartimaeus' story, it's just like the first story in Luke 18. Jesus is coming through. He begins to cry out, O oh, son of David, have mercy on me Jesus calls him over and heals him watch this in Luke chapter number 18 Jesus is entering into Jericho heals a blind man where they get it mixed up sometimes and we don't realize in Mark chapter 10 blind Bartimaeus it says when Jesus is exiting and leaving the Jericho that he heals this blind man this is what I truly believe that there is power in positioning I truly believe that that day that blind Bartimaeus is standing around and people are saying yeah just a few minutes ago Jesus passed by here and there was a blind man and Jesus and he began to cry out and Jesus called him over and healed him and he just went into Jericho a few minutes ago and this blind man has been made whole I believe in my mind that blind Bartimaeus heard something like that and he thought you know what if he walked in this gate at some point today he's going to come out of this gate and you know what he did he said if he He's going to come by. I'm going to go ahead and position myself and I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait on the Lord because I know if he came in, he's going to come back around. And so later in the day when Jesus is coming out, no doubt he probably began to hear, here he comes and he began to cry out and it all key, the key was he positioned himself so that he can encounter Jesus. Zacchaeus ran so that he can meet Jesus and have an encounter with him. Positioning is so key. Position yourself in fasting and prayer, Bible reading. If you really, 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 seriously want a breakthrough, you can get your breakthrough. You just might have to put a little works with your faith. You might have to pray about it. You might have to fast about it. You might have to get in the word about it. Amen? You got to position yourself so that Jesus can encounter your life. Number two, what did he do? Zach climbs into the sycamore tree. I don't have time to lay all this out. But in that day, the Egyptians, they would use sycamore trees to build their coffins. The sycamore represented a coffin to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is about to have his life changed. He's ready. He's tired of coming up short, Randy. He runs to meet Jesus and he climbs up into the sycamore tree. He climbs up into this place that can represent a coffin or death. In other words, saying, I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm ready to die to myself and my ways and my thinking. I'm going to climb up into this thing and say, Jesus, I need you. Man, Jesus took upon himself a tree, didn't he? He saved us. He called us. 
us to carry the cross daily? The answer is still the same. You got to carry the cross. You got to read your Bible. You got to pray. <laughs> You'll see the things in your life when you're coming up short. God will start making up the difference. Amen. I got to tell you this right here. Number three, if you wouldn't mind bringing it up for me. He wanted, he waited in that place. He waited until Jesus came by. Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down. I recognize, I see you. I see you run ahead and climb into the tree just to meet me. This day, I'm going to your house. Listen, if you've been coming up short lately, you've been in a season of coming up short, listen, check yourself, break every curse thing, right? Die to your old ways, and then wait on Jesus, and He will come to your house. And when He comes to your house, everything begins to change. Can I hear a good amen out there? studied about sycamore trees this tree represented Zach's life so much Zacchaeus's life it was a type and shadow of his heart his life a sycamore tree they say this in order for it to expand and grow to the next level of growth it will have to willingly bark and be uh, shed its bark if it wants to remain a certain size it will maintain its bark but if it wants to go to another level of growth and produce more fruit if you will it has to willingly shed its bark it will loose its bark because the bark is not flexible and it has to be uh, 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 surrendered in order to go to the next level for Zacchaeus listen he could either stay as a hurting broken mean man empty on the inside or he could yield his life and climb up into this tree and say Jesus if I did anybody wrong I'm gonna make it right a sycamore tree will loosen and cut and drop any weak limbs that it has for greater expansion and growth the Bible says for us to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset us not only the sin but even the weight that hinders us from the fullest potential that God has in our life to lay it aside so we can grow. Amen? A sycamore tree is known for this, oh, having an open head to the S-U-N sun. Zacchaeus would have to climb up into a tree and he would have to open himself up to the authority of Christ that no longer is he the head of his own life but now he surrendered to the head of the church and the head of his own life Jesus Christ amen sycamores are known to stand out in the winter time and this is what it said about them it says sycamores stand out in winter time and it specifically said because they're known to be white washed <laughs> Sycamores look white in the winter time. They stand out as, as, as a, a bright white color. We know that Jesus takes our black, dirty, rough heart and takes his red blood and washes our heart white like snow. That's what the scripture says, like white like snow. Amen. I'm not talking about your skin tone. I'm talking about your heart today. And in the winter time, the sycamore stands out because it's been whitewashed. Are you even getting this today? In a, in a season, in a culture 
where sin is all around us. When we climb into the sycamore tree and Jesus becomes our authority and we're washed in him, his people are supposed to stand out in the middle of the chaos and the struggle in this world. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. And the Bible says we are a peculiar people. We're not supposed to look like the world, act like the world, run with the world, talk like the world. We're supposed to be whitewashed and stand out from amongst this world. Amen? Amen. Lastly, sycamores produce a nut that is called a brown head. And in order to get the seed out, it has to be broken. And its very, its shell is very hard. And it has to be broken and sometimes even smashed to get the seed out to produce greater fruit. Zacchaeus was a hard man. He was a rough man. He was a mean man. He was a broken man. You gotta understand this tree represented so much of his life. It just wasn't by accident that he climbed up into a sycamore tree. In other words, he went up there and said, Lord, my heart's been hard. My life's been hard. I haven't made the right decisions. Or he could have even said, I've been broken by others. I've had let people let me down. And because of that, it's produced this, this hard heart in me. Jesus would have to break him to make him again. Aren't you thankful that Jesus loves us so much that he will even break us sometimes to make us what he wants us to be? Is this all right today? Is this all right? If you're coming up short, if you're coming up short, it's a cycle of continuing to come up short. Today, I feel like in my heart that God wants us to look in the mirror and say, there's some things I need you to do so that you can unlock my hand and my principle to work in your life. Amen? He'll bless you. He'll strengthen you. He'll help you. He'll strengthen you. I truly believe with all my heart that He is here to make up the difference in our life. I feel in my heart that there is a surrendering heart and atmosphere in this room. I want you to remain seated. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to bow your heads. And I want to ask you today. You know, I come back from a conference fired up and I was ready to preach a 90 mile an hour sermon to get us running and shouting and jumping. <laughs> but the Lord said, preach about coming up short having some folks evaluate their heart God's not mad at anyone it's his love that says check yourself it's his love that says don't hide your report card just bring it to me and I will help you you don't have to hide you don't have to hurt climb into the tree watch me come to your house and change your life forever